Well, I hope you enjoyed the lunch and are ready to take notes. I prepared uh, just under 3,000 frames for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. In, in animation form, though. Um, in Chinese medicine, there's, uh, there are concepts uh, that relate to Tao, which is basically following one's own uh, path in life. And I feel that uh, whatever you do in life, you need to um, utilize more all the skills and talents you have. So, this is my first animation ever, so, you know, call Disney. There is talent aboard. <clears throat> Let's go. So my name is Petri Federle. I come from Finland and I'm very much honored and grateful to be here. <laughs> you can really believe that. My title, Man Between Heaven and Earth, Yin and Yang Made Easy, and a good deal of other things I wonder. <coughs> Regarding my background, my scientific background is really solid. I mean, how many people can claim that a scientific apparatus is named after them? <laughs> Metro dish was named my Jew well before I was born. <laughs> now here's my alter ego growing out of this scientific background of mine, starting to explore the world. I've always drawn and I worked in the advertisement industry for a good while. Never did an animation though. For about 15 years, I competed internationally in sport shooting. I also practice archery and sports in general is really close to my heart. Last time I was in Bulgaria was about 20 years ago in Sofia in, in junior shooting European Championships. And to my memory, this is even a little more exciting and unnerving than that was. My main occupation is combining Chinese medicine, acupuncture mostly, with massage. I manage quite a lot of pain issues. I'm also very interested in looking through the Chinese medicine spectacles at scientific findings. And interestingly, many of the Chinese medicine techniques, in my opinion, aim to revive easy water in bloodstream and cells. Lately, I've been studying psychology with special interest in sports-related mental performance issues and matters of conscious, consciousness as non-local phenomena uh, near-death experiences, among other things, in three. In one sentence, I'm willing to look at anything and everything, which is, I suppose, another way of saying I'm impatient. Strength of mind, perhaps, is uh, the ability to connect interdisciplinary dots. And I like it. Um, I have a relationship with Easy Water. It all started out making soup in my kitchen and, and noticing how some spices immediately spread out uh, across the soup surfaces and some coagulate. And that was my uh, original um, impetus for, for contacting Jerry. Hmm. Probably almost everybody is of course familiar with the requirements for easy water. Water, hydrophilic surface and source of energy. As I understand it, there are many factors that harm easy water, most of them acidic and creating positive charge. Also, our inability to get rid of positive charge um, is a factor. In fact, as I understand it, uh, it is interesting how many different modalities essentially talk about easy water, And they are basically talking about the same thing, be it alkaline, alkaline diet or earthing. There are also many factors that help the organization of easy. Most come from or emulate nature. Nature seems to me to be very much concentrated on resetting water to a pristine state. Walking in nature is one really important thing. 
I wonder if our hands actually play a part and create a dynamo-like effect whilst walking and help charge us. Now, first bit of yin and yang. I feel easy water has kind of an inhalation base, uh, phase and exhalation phase. Balance between charging and discharging. Everything is cyclical in our physiology and, and universe. Whilst looking at water, I stumbled upon Gerald's interviews and quite soon a picture started to form of the relationship of water to Chinese medicine ideology. In that regards, I feel Gerald really, really hit the nail on the head for me. Another acquaintance that was really interesting is um, very Dawn Batman Galich, to friends Batman. I feel he approaches things or approached things clinically quite interestingly. Actually, just in case someone hasn't read any of his books, here's a little informational clip of his views as I understand them. Water is drank in the stomach, it continues on into small intestine. Part is transported to pancreas, and to my understanding, a sort of charge separation takes place. Alkaline bicarbonate solution is excreted to buffer the acid contents from stomach. Another part is absorbed, again essentially charge separated and transported to both support the negative charge of stomach lining as well as uh, stomach acid. On a cellular level, his message is this. Water is absorbed into bloodstream. It enters into, into extracellular space with ease and with assistance of electrolytes and proteins enters the cell. If, however, water and or the helping hand of electrolytes are not available, the passage into the cell is blocked. What ensues, uh, in his um, opinion, is uh, sodium slash uh, natrium retention in intercellular space and the aim to force water into the cell with pressure. Plan B, if you will. An example of the difference between these two uh, solutions of cell hydration, um, cell hydration is between a kid and a middle-aged person. Only the latter of the two will have swollen backs under ice after a late night back of chips. What ensues, according to him, um, from this plan B, is blood pressure rise. It is important to hydrate the brain. Oedema, oedema gathers and at the same time cells are dehydrated. So, end with the show. Where was I? Um, now I remember. Yes, let's go on. Oh, it seems my alter ego there got hungry. <coughs> Sorry about that, folks. It seems that he's a bit startled. I wonder if we could let him catch his breath. He looks like he went into a stress response. I suggest, uh, I suggest we help him and breathe with him in the rhythm of four counts in. We hold our breath for seven counts and then we slowly exhale through the nose um, for eight counts. This regulates our autonomic nervous system, which I think has a relationship with, the, relationship with EC water. Did you get it? Four in, seven hold, eight counts out. Everybody with me. Are you ready? Breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
Slowly exhale through the nose. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And stop for a few seconds. And then you can go on. Somebody might notice some changes in the feelings of the hand and in the rhythm of the heartbeat. I propose as a possibility that anabolic and catabolic functions of autonomic nervous system are um, kind of reflected in easy water buildup and breakdown. And regulate, regulation of breath is one good way to regulate the autonomic nervous system. I, as well as Chinese medicine, sees us human a part of our environment and we are subjected to charges. I often wondered how electrically created heat feels cold, even when the draft is ruled out. I, suggested, uh, I suggest positive charge uh, plays a role. On the other hand, heat created with a proper fireplace with ceramic components, even in lower temperatures, feels much warmer. I suggest negative charge plays a role. Here you can see my alter ego feeling really nice. And even when you rule out the fire and you close the lids, the fire is no longer on. The feeling is distinctly nice. I think we feel charge. Another example would be us residing over the negative charge of ground. When I look at the sky, I, um, I feel that the negative charge, as it changes, repels clouds to different altitudes. It is interesting how clouds are really, really on the same altitude many times. As positive charge accumulates, clouds eventually lower, atmospheric pressure is low, we feel unwell, pains increase, and our negative charge is unsupported. I was looking for a study to base the psychological effect on and found some by Michaguchi et al. about lowering barometric pressure how and how it aggravates depression-like behavior in rats in forced swim tests. They really don't feel like swimming when the weather is bad. <laughs> That's rats. So we also feel worse and worse under these circumstances and succumb um, when our charge diminishes. <coughs> Happily, there is a solution. Ah, you have there something in your pocket? Ah, interesting. What is it? It looks like a glass of easy water. <laughs> Drinking it with our charge once more supported, we, we feel great and we can endure the onslaught of bacteria, <laughs> of viruses. We have energy to exercise, combat wild animals and people, fix the flat tire, handle Xerox machine, and even do our paperwork. No problem at all. And there is some evidence that even teenagers can be handled. <laughs> My friend here really looks like he likes his cape, but are you ready to go? Oh, I hope he didn't get depressed. So he's ready to go. Time for a small recap of this first part. Is his turn? Mm -hmm. 
I think that charge plays a physiological as well as psychological role. And also, in accordance with Chinese medicine, the charge we are surrounded with has an effect on us. I brought with him a few slides from Finland, perhaps examples of easy. This is Kiippu Spring. It produces 7,000 cubic meters of turquoise water in one day. It has 14 uh, spots that are all turqu turquoise or even silvery in appearance where the water pours in. And believe it or not, there's about five to seven meters of water right there in the middle of that picture. It is unbelievably clear. 7,000 cubic meters a day. Another example, so-called boat track of Vainamoinen from Finnish National Epos, or National Book. The tracks that the boats leave don't move. They stay uh, stationary for a long time, and I think that possibly the boats in summertime break down easy. Third example, Finnish tradition of helping help with drinking birch sap when it start its, starts its capillary rise in the springtime. It doesn't really contain much in, um, in solute or nutrition, but it has gone through a capillary rise, which I think is the most important. here prepared to help us learn about the theory of yin and yang. On the other hand, we might not. Are you good to go? He looks a little bit bored, waiting for me. So let's go. Here my friend is working on his Tai Chi practice and he conjures up a yin and yang symbol. I mean, he should be doing it. Oh, sorry about that again. Well, there we go. Yin and Yang are opposite forces that need to mix with each other to keep a process of life going on. Like mixing oil with water, it needs constant effort. Yang ideogram depicts the sunny side of a hill. It represents heat, masculinity, heaven, light, movement and spirit. Yin depicts uh, the shadow side of the hill. It represents cold, feminine, earth, darkness, stillness, and body in relation to spirit. However, the yin and yang symbol contains also a third party, the interface between the two. It is not unlike a wave, which hints, at least to me, a function. Yin and Yang is never two, it is three. This interface represents Qi, energy, or man in relation to heaven and earth. <coughs> Another way to look at the function of Qi in regards to Yin and Yang is in this revolving movement. Constant activity between the two is needed. Otherwise, a separation occurs and life is no longer supported. In between a man and a woman, this third party, of course, symbolizes the child that keeps mom and dad busy. Life goes on, 
via this third party, the child has its own yin and yang balance and someday finds the opposite. And yet another generation is born. Yin and yang are often considered to be subjective. A white paper can be compared to little less white, but you can uh, replace the white paper or compare the white paper with even more white paper. And what was yang is now yin. Inspired by Gerald's work, I began to more and more ponder upon, upon um, absolute, meaningful representatives of yin and yang. What if we could break open this yin and yang egg? I think that as yin, the black one, is something that absorbs yang. It can be thought of as matter with mass. Perhaps even the elements of the periodic table qualify. Yang, on the other hand, is something that is absorbed. Mm -hmm. I am thinking on the lines of electromagnetic spectrum with no mass. Well, these young factors were a bit hard to come by as examples, so a candle, flashlight, and your ordinary household laser saver will have to do. Yang is something that can exercise an effect on yin and even produce something out of it. Like that. Now I realize that these examples of mine may seem a tad unrealistic or exaggerated. I mean, even a kid knows that lightsabers are really red and green. Where then does easy water fit in in regards of yin and yang? Yin would represent the hydrophilic substance. Yang, the source of energy or heat, of which many, if not all, are derived from sun. In a moment, you'll see where I think easy water fits in. From my point of view, easy is a phenomena that is equal to qi in uh, physiology and life. Water is the medium where the act many of the activities of qi take place. In physiology, according to Chinese medicine, there are a few sources of warmth heart and kidneys. They have a yin and yang relationship uh, with each other. Heart represents so-called fire element in uh, five element theory and kidney water. And water and kidneys is where life has its beginning. And it, it is the most important element and organ in the body. <coughs> Now, I hope you don't get confused. These two organs are also sources of different type of fire that um, also originate from them. In kidneys, we have Ming Men fire, so-called life gate fire, and in heart, so-called minister fire. It is a smaller fire. Ming Men fire in the kidneys represent, in my interpretation, physiological warmth, and minister fire from uh, more of emotional warmth that exercises an, an effect on cellular level easy by resonance. This Ming Men fire can also be thought of via the adrenal glands or the HPA axis. I propose that both physiological and emotional sources of warmth regulate easy water and thus available charge. Further, that physiological warmth provides heat, emotional warmth, harmony of resonance or coherence, not unlike what we have seen here today, or not unlike what Masar Vemoto has been originally doing. I think that heart rate variability may, might be a measure for this coherence. I also think 
that um, autonomous nervous system is a player in regulating EC metabolism, if you could say so. I speculate that sympathetic response breaks EC down, perhaps releasing energy for immediate survival. Parasympathetic activity helps build up EC just as it helps build more cells in the body, charging our batteries. But hey, let's go on to the big picture. Here we have another yin and yang relationship. Here we come to man between heaven and earth. Man is the interface between them at, what, at which level this chi functions, at the medium of water, perhaps. Earth represents yin, sun represents yang, and man chi is in this trinity, mixing the two, which is really important. So what was next? Ah, uh, he has a question. How about the infrared? Well, uh, now I remember. We have reached the discussion part of this presentation. What if natural infrared uh, contains data? So you mean a natural data for our body and cells and water that they need to maintain health, a sort of a reset or baseline data. Yeah, NASA does use it. They do communicate to Mars rovers with infrared laser. Hmm, have to think about that. Do you have any other, other examples over there? Yes, that is a good point. You can even remote control TV with infrared. Yes, that is, that is a good point. Then what would be the antenna? His idea is that um, perhaps your capillaries worked as an antenna. So receiving the cosmic inherent code of life, and that is one reason why exposing oneself to nature is of vital importance in addition to uh, absorbing charge. Easy favors three microns. Do we have anything on that? Well, here we have a hand or a finger or a leg of our friend here. And we see how distal capillaries at their smallest are at around 2.7 to 3 or 4 microns in diameter, depending on the source. And uh, that is the minimum for human red blood cells to be able to pass through. When a um, stressful situation occurs, the stressometer goes red. Sympathetic activity kicks in, capillaries are constricted at this distal level or blocked off earlier um, in more proximal level. Does that mean that we drop out of optimal tune to absorb 3 micron infrared? Now the former idea that I acknowledge is hugely speculative, but I still feel there might be something to it. When this idea stemmed to me um, regarding infrared, I felt supported by a company manufacturing energy patches that transfer information in their patent to the body at infrared range, with nothing going inside the body. I asked myself whether infrared might be a carrier wave for natural data. It is present everywhere in the universe. Also, in acupuncture points, a dense network of vascularization is found at least in the size of 15 to 50 micrometers, perhaps smaller too. These points are considered, among other things, to be a communication nexus between inside and outside of the body. In Chinese medicine also, very much attention is paid, paid to so-called Luo network, which can be simply thought of as the capillaries. 
a picture started to form. What if our blood um, and the water it in, in it negotiates with also a non-local source of consciousness, biocapillaries? Dr. Bruce Lipton postulates that our blood cells with their unique glycoprotein surface structures are the thing to pick up our individual data set. Interestingly, when I started searching into the mother matter after I, I thought about the tree microns, I found about Shelly Joy. Uh, she works at the California Institute of Integral Studies, Philosophy, Cosmology and Consciousness. She brings up a median capillary diameter of 10 microns in relation to human body temperature defining the infrared we radiate at the same wavelength. I was looking at it from the 3 microns and she from the median body temperature point of view. Perhaps she is more right in that sense um, than me. I don't know. Shelley also thinks of our water forming, forming uh, the water in our blood forming a single quantum field. And that is, I don't really know what exactly that means, but that is something that is really interesting uh, regarding Chinese medicine. In Chinese medicine, blood is said to be the vessel or ship for Shen, which is a term that is translated as spirit or consciousness. It is said to originate from the heaven with no religious backdrop. This would make sense to me. Infrared from the cosmic remote containing inherent healthy data. The Shen blood relationship um, has prompted me to look at, it, uh, especially this water infrared interaction. I'm sure other wavelengths must play really important roles as well. She also brings up cere cerebral spinal fluid as one other medium for communicating. No time to delve further into that, but let me say, I feel I knocked at the door that she just might have a key into. So what am I suggesting? Now, don't take anything I say um, at the face value. These are uh, ideas. I suggest that when a person is not supported by environment and nutrition, his charge drops, and when some insult is added to injury in form of a nasty phone call or let's say hmm, your everyday asteroid impact he may lose his connection to his cosmic circuit and react to it in a manner that does not support the regain of charge and entunement often this person retreats indoors out of nature the very environment that would support him. This is something that come up, comes up in alternative modalities and it's sometimes called reversed polarity. And it's, it's treated also. Nobody, to my knowledge, seems to have any data of what actually is going on. In ear acupuncture, it is referred to as oscillators, where it, as in normal individuals, the same side ear treats the same side of the body. And these oscillators, the ear treats the opposite side of the body. It is tested by means of apl applied kinesiology with poles of one hand placed on turn on top of one's head and muscle testing the other hand. And interestingly, being dehydrated it mimics the same findings. In one sentence, people are like batteries wrong way around in a charger. They no, don't get charged. Even nature doesn't seem to help them or have an effect. They sleep during the day. They are awake during the night. Positive emotions don't have any effect on them. Only negative emotions seem to drive them. I've been thinking about many options. If the uh, charge in the cell just drops, if chirality of water is involved, if, uh, if the geometrical structure of water has changed from, uh, from hexagonal to pentagonal, like for example um, Dr. Mu Shik Yon from uh, Korea suggests. I use acupuncture to rectify this and people at times say that they actually feel like they revolve around their center axis from left to right and to right to left. I would think that the connection or intunement to this, what I call cosmic remote control, takes place. It is something that is 
uh, the effect is so huge when you can see the individual actually kind of waking up, starting to smile, and coming back to life, that I would think that it would really warrant more discussion and more studies about what exactly is going on. And I'm sure water has something to do with it. So let's go back to my friend here. Let's look at what is going on inside. By the way, that is not blood, it is just coffee. Inside house surroundings, there usually is absolutely nothing to support negative charge and this regain of connection I'm talking about. When one loses place in a circuit, man is no longer between heaven and earth. This disconnect is reflected both physiologically and psychologically, and I think even spiritually. Symptoms are high aches, tiredness, inactivity, feeling of being alone and powerless. Is this one possible way to look at depression and post-traumatic uh, stress disorder? Loss of charge and of circuitry. Time to lift the veil of despair. Connect with the earth, breathe like many ancient traditions remind us to do, and apply the electromagnetic properties of our nervous system to regulate our own health and consciousness. I'll leave you with some ideas about Kundalini energy. I wonder whether actually a Birkeland type of current might flow through us when we are part of cosmic circuitry. At times I ponder about the nature of the soul. Let us suppose that such a thing exists and it is non-local. Perhaps it might be attracted to well-organized negatively charged body in tune with the cosmic circuit. As a finale, I have here, coming right up, my favorite concept or drawing from uh, Gerald's book, The Fourth Phase of Water, the famous out on a limb meter. I extend my huge gratitude to Gerald for letting me to not only speak of matters out on a limb, but actually kind of jump from limb to limb. I hope I don't fall. Thank you. <laughs>